Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart the Prince of Wales and you guessed it, we're here with the Euro 2020 prediction video. I know most of YouTube are doing these videos at the moment and I thought I'd throw my hat in as well and give it a go, see who we can predict as winning the tournament and it'll be a good idea as well then to come back to this video when the tournament's out the way to see how close I was to predicting the winner, group winners etc etc. You know how this goes, we're just going to jump straight into it with Group A, which is the group that my team is in, Wales. And we have Italy, Turkey, and Switzerland. I think Italy will win the group. Uh, I'm going to be controversial by here. And I'm going to say Switzerland sneak second. And then it's between Turkey and Wales for third. And I'm thinking Wales will just sneak third. And Turkey fourth. A lot of people online are saying that Turkey are a really strong... Uh, team which they are decent enough record but they are relying on a 35 year old in Yilmaz decent that he has been in French football I just think on the international stage it's a big ask he's also got different players around him that he's used to at club level I think Wales even though they are quite weak overall um, they can pull up a few surprises they certainly did a couple of years back in the last tournament uh, Switzerland I think will just about do second but second third and fourth switzerland wales and turkey any combination of those three could get you know any of those places but i think italy will win the group mancini has them playing quite well so that's what i've got for group a group b we have russia belgium denmark and finland i think belgium will win the group and i think they'll win the group quite comfortably this is their last chance to really win the tournament with the generation that they have of players i know a couple of people have retired such as vincent company for example um they do have an agent defense which is their kind of weakness but they have fantastic players in romelu lukaku uh they have uh, kevin de bruyne eden hazard i mean three players there, three star players there which are good enough to get any team in the world let's be honest so belgium to win the group quite easily and then it, it's difficult because finland i think they're a bit of a surprise package they could do well I think Russia will finish bottom. I think they're going to be quite. We're going to see quite a flat Russia, which is what we saw in Euro 2016 when they were in uh, England and Wales's group and Slovakia's group. Um, and in the World Cup, they hosted it and they did a lot better. But I think Russia are a little bit like French, a bit like France and Germany, where it's like which France or Germany is going to turn up. I think we're going to see the flat Russia turn up at this tournament. So we're going to put them bottom, and then it's between Denmark and Finland. I think Denmark should get second, and I think Finland will sneak third, courtesy of them probably getting at least one win in this group, whether it be Russia or Denmark they beat. So I think that's Group B. Group C, I'm quite confident that the Netherlands will finish top of this group, and I'm quite confident that North Macedonia will finish bottom, although they might pull up a shock result against ukraine or austria or even the netherlands who knows but i don't think they will qualify i think they'll, they'll finish bottom uh, it's between austria and ukraine for second and third place and i am going to give my second place to austria i think and ukraine will sneak third i think that's how that group's gonna uh, pan out i'm gonna accept cookies by here as well because that's probably quite annoying for people let's pull this down so we can see what else is going on Group D, Scotland, England, Croatia, and the Czech Republic. Is football coming home? I don't think it's going to come home, but I think England will win the group. They'll probably beat Croatia. They should beat Scotland. And they should win the group, basically. Which is funny, because if you win the group, you'll probably be against one of the tough teams from Group F. I think England might go out at that stage, possibly. It depends. But uh, England got a very strong team, although defensively, I think they're a bit suspect. Uh, Maguire has been unfit going into the tournament, so we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But I think England will win the group. Croatia should finish second. I'm sorry, Scotland. I don't think you're, you're winning this. I, th I don't think you're coming out of this group. I think you're going to finish bottom. I got a funny feeling that uh, in their first game against Czech Republic, Czech Republic will probably beat them. So I'm going to put Scotland bottom, Czech Republic third. It gives Scotland an uphill task again at Wembley against England. I don't think they'll beat England, and they won't beat Croatia. I think that's the order of the group. England, Croatia, Czech Republic, and Scotland. Like I said as well, I'm going to come back to these groups, and I'm going to like tick off what positions I got right and wrong. Uh, hopefully, I can get a full set, or all 24 teams. That'd be amazing if I did, but I'm probably not going to. But 
if I could get if I could get 16, that, that means I get four groups right. If I got 16 out of the 24 teams correct in the right positioning, I'd be happy with that. Uh, group E, so Poland, Spain, Sweden, and uh, Slovakia. This is such a hard group to call. Um, this is a, a weak Spain team compared to what they usually have. Morata is like their main striker, and he's nowhere near the quality that, that we used to see him with Spain. You think of the likes of uh, Fernando Torres, you think of the likes of Raul in, in years gone by, David Villa. They're these kind of players, they haven't really got that anymore. I don't think Spain win the group. I'm not sure who wins the group. I'm looking at this thinking who wins it. Uh, I think Poland finished bottom. I'm shocking everyone by here. I think Poland finished bottom. I think they're too much of a one-man team. They rely on Robert Lewandowski way too much. And he's a sort of strikeout. He's not like a Ronaldo or a Messi where he can just create something from nothing. He needs service. He gets lots and lots of service in a very good Bayern Munich team. He doesn't have the same teammates around him in Poland. I think Poland will struggle against all three of these teams here. They might... I'm not saying they're going to have no points. They might get a draw or even two draws. I think this is going to be a tight group, but I think they finish bottom. I think Slovakia will finish third. Yeah, I think Slovakia will finish third. Between Spain and Sweden, I think Spain should just have enough about them to finish top. And Sweden will finish second. But that group, I think this could be the tightest group out of all of them, to be honest. But I can say about any of these groups, couldn't I? Here we go, the fun group. Group F, group of death. Who wins? Who loses? I think Hungary, let's just put Hungary there. Uh, sorry, Hungary. I think they're probably a spirited performance in all three of the games. They are on home soil, but I think they will finish bottom of the group. And then it's a case of what happens between these three. Portugal, France, and Germany. I'm going to go with France to win the group. They are the world champions. They also got runners-up last time in the Euros. I think Portugal sneaks second, and Germany finished third. All three of them will beat Hungary. I think France will just edge it against the other two, and then it'll come down to stuff like goal difference and stuff. But I think that's what we're going with. And now we got to look at the six teams here that I have for the four best third places. Now you got to think of who teams are going to win against and lose against. So I'm going to say, for example, Wales will lose Italy, but I think they'll probably get a draw and a win, so they'll probably get like four points. Uh, Finland. I'm saying they'll probably beat Russia, and again, they might get a draw some way, probably about four points. Ukraine probably beat North Macedonia, and again, it's like a four points. So There's like three teams there, Wales, Finland, Ukraine, Croak get four points. Czech Republic, they'll probably beat in Scotland. And then it's, are they going to perhaps get points against Croatia and England? I'm a bit more doubtful with that. Slovakia, this could be anyone's group by here. Spain, Sweden, Slovakia, Poland. This is the group I'm probably going to get wrong out of all of them. Maybe, who knows? But I think, looking at this, I think Wales, Finland, Ukraine, and Germany. Because Germany could beat Hungary and then they could get four. I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, right, I can see four teams getting four points. And I can see these two, Czech Republic and Slovakia, maybe getting three. So I'm go that's my reasoning for going for Wales, Finland, Ukraine, and Germany. And now, going to the knockout stage. Oh! What ties do we have here? So Belgium, Wales. I would so love to put my home nation of Wales through by here. This is as far as we go. We haven't got the... We got, we got good players, don't get me wrong. And you could argue that Belgium are perhaps on the last legs of their great golden generation. And Wales are perhaps better now than they were in Euro 2016. But Gareth Bale isn't the player he was a few years ago. Ramsey's been ravaged with injuries for the past few years. He hasn't played much for Wales in the past few years. Good youngsters have come through, like Harry Wilson and Dan James. Defensively, we are a bit sus. We are a bit sus. And also, with the whole Ryan Giggs thing and, and, and you know, Rob Page taking charge, who you know used to be the under-21 manager and everything, I think it's just a little bit too much. And I can see Belgium beating us. And they also beat us recently as well in the World Cup qualifier. So I'm going to say Belgium to beat Wales. Italy, Austria. Italy, like I said, Roberto Mancini's got them playing well. Uh, they got some fantastic players. They got like Locatelli, Ciro Immobile has been fantastic this season again for Lazio. We scored like 20 goals in the past three or four seasons, or over 20 goals in the past three or four seasons for Lazio, I think. Uh, he's been looking deadly for them. They've got a fantastic attack with uh, Lorenzo Insigne up there as well, usually playing on the wings as well. Um, they're a little bit old at centre-back. They've got Bonucci and Chiellini, who are quite old. 
but I feel like the way that he has them playing, they're not a defensive Italy anymore, they're more of an attack in Italy, and I think they will be more than a match for Austria, and we'll go through. France, Ukraine, quite easy. France are world champions. They have a fantastic squad. Karim Benzema is back in the French setups. You've got Benzema, Griezmann, uh, and Mbappe, three of the best forwards in the world, should I say. That's before you even bring Giroud into the mix, who's only like six or seven goals off Thierry Henry's all-time goal-scoring record. It's been fantastic for France over the years. You've also got the likes of Paul Pogba on his day. He could be one of the best midfielders in the world. You've got good players in defence like Varane and Kimbembe. You've got N'Golo Kante, Champions League winner, probably the best defensive midfielder in the world. France is going to be too strong for Ukraine, but I think if Ukraine got to the round of 16, it would be a fantastic achievement for them. Uh, Croatia, Sweden... This is going to be an interesting match if, if this does happen. I'm going to edge it to Croatia. I'm going to say they get through either 1-0 or it will go to like extra time or penalties. I think it'll be a tight match. I think Croatia go through. And that sets up a lovely repeat of the World Cup final right there. This, <laughs> this is a match that nobody ever thought of. Spain v Finland. I would love to put Finland through. They could be like the Iceland of, of this tournament, couldn't they? That, that's how I'm looking at it. And they've got potential. They've got good players. Timo Puki is a fantastic player for Finland. He's been great for Norwich the past couple of seasons. Spain are the sort of team that could be flat. I, th I do think without a proper... They've got, they got Morata, but they haven't got much strength in depth. It's the first Spain side that hasn't picked a Real Madrid player as well, which is just bonkers, but they, you, Spain should go through, shouldn't they? I would love to be proven wrong by this, but I'm going to say Spain go through. England v Portugal. The match to determine whether England come home, and unfortunately they don't. I'm sorry, England, but you don't go any further. Uh, I think England will win the group, and then whoever they come up against, whether it be Portugal, Germany, or France, they will struggle. They might beat them, but I don't think, even if they beat whoever they face here, when they get to this stage, I think they, they crash out. Um, they got a very good attack. They got some of the best forwards in the world. But the squad that Gareth Southgate's picked, they're very weak looking in midfield. Not much strength in depth. Not not weak as in, you know, they got the worst midfield. They, they haven't. They got a decent enough midfield. But they haven't got, you know, the, the sort of strength in depth that other big nations have in the tournament. And then defensively, they look a little bit suspect with, uh, with Harry Maguire being injured. Tyrone Mings, if he starts with him, he's looked a bit shaky recently. So I'm going to say Portugal. Ronaldo possibly by this stage breaking the all-time record for the Euros. Uh, he, by, by this point, he would have probably scored in the group stage, I imagine, and he would have got the record, I think, for goals in Euros or most goals in Euros. I think he scored in 2004, 8, 12, and 16. So yeah, this would be his fifth tournament. So I don't think anyone's got more than four. So this would be a record breaker for him. And then Portugal go through. Netherlands and Germany. That's going to be a tasty little affair, isn't it? Netherlands, Germany, but it's the Netherlands without Virgil van Dijk. You do wonder, don't you, with with the Netherlands? Will they will they struggle without him? Uh, will he will he, will Roland Koeman persist with the four three three, or will he change things up and play five at the back or three at the back? The fans all want him to play four three three, I think, but I think Germany are just going to edge it. There's something about Germany in major tournaments that. They're a bit of a hit and miss, but as they had a bad tournament in the World Cup, I think this Germany will bounce back. It's Joe Chim Lowe's last ever tournament as Germany manager. He's been Germany manager since 2006, a hell of a long time to be a manager in international football. I think he's going to want to go with the bang. I think they will get a big win on Netherlands. Holland will go crashing out. And then we, finally we have Switzerland and Denmark. I think whichever team goes through here doesn't go beyond Germany, to be honest with you. Uh, it'll be a close affair again. Will we see some magic from Jadron Shakiri? Possibly his last tournament for Switzerland, maybe. Could he's get on a bit, I think, now. Uh, Denmark, they've got some fantastic players in their team. I'm going to give it to Denmark, but it's going to be quite close, to be honest. Right, quarterfinals, Belgium v Italy. I would love to give the win to Belgium. But I think it's something about this Italy team. It's something about this Italy team. They're the dark horses in the tournament for me. I think, like I said, the way Mancini's got them playing, they play good attacking, attractive football. They get a good switch of play. They got wing backs that cover a lot of ground. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna sneak it to Italy only just 
I have got a soft spot for Italian football. I, I, I'm not going to lie. So maybe I'm a slightly biased picking Italy here. But I think Italy go through there. I think France will beat Croatia. I think France will be too strong for Croatia in the repeat of the World Cup final. I'm going to get to the semis. Spain v Portugal. I'm thinking... I've mentioned already in the video that Spain's attack's quite weak compared to previous years. They have got some decent players, don't get me wrong, like Pedri, he's been fantastic this season, but I think usually in the Iberian sort of derby, Spain have had the upper hand in these Euros. I think Portugal finally get one over on Spain and Portugal go through. Germany, Denmark, I said earlier, Germany probably go through here and that sets up a tasty semi-final. Italy, France, Portugal, Germany. Who wins the tournament? Who goes through to the final from here? I would love to say Italy, but I'm being too biased if I pick Italy again. I think France will go through here. I mentioned earlier about the strength and depth they got. It is ridiculous. They they could pick their second best team, like you know the replacement player for every position, and they'd still have a stronger team than most in the competition. Probably it's ridiculous. Portugal v Germany. We actually got three from all group from Group F here. Uh, Portugal v Germany. I'm going to give it to Portugal. It's, it's nice to have, you know, Ronaldo's last hurrah on a Portugal shirt. It's romantic, isn't it? And it, it makes a lot of sense. But I do think France will get revenge and win the tournament by beating the team that beat them on home soil in the 2016 tournament. And that's my predictions there, folks. So what we'll do at the end of the tournament, we'll come back to this video. I might even do a reaction to this video and see how many I got right and wrong. And we'll go from there. Anyway, guys, I've been Dragonheart. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.